So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create React app. Then we're going to CD into the app and open up our favorite code editor. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're just going to delete this app.js that comes with React. We're going to create our own uh, main component here. We're going to call it stickynotes.js. Next, we're going to add a styled components module to our React app. Um, styled components, if you're not familiar, is a very popular React styling solution. Now we're just going to build our sticky notes component. Um, first of all, we're going to create several styled components. Note that we're passing props to container. We're creating this project in React hooks, so um, we're going to be using the use state and use effect hook, so we're just going to use use state to set this notes stateful variable. We're going to use the use effect hook to listen for a shift click, which is how people are going to add notes with our app. Um, page X and page Y are the absolute positioning of the element on the page, and that's what we're going to pass as props to container um, to then position the note on the page. So now we're going to adjust the imports in app.js to reflect um, our sticky notes component. We're going to go ahead and start up the app and see what we got. And yeah, now it's a, this is pretty much the core functionality of the app. You can see that you can create a note and uh, it's working well. So now we're just going to turn um, this text area into a controlled component. And if you're unfamiliar with React controlled components, there's a great section on the React docs about forms. You can learn all about it there. A little quick refactor here uh, to make it possible. We're not using an implicit return anymore. So note that we're using the uh, reduce function and making use of the splat operator again here. Make sure you correctly assign your uh, callback handler functions here and also the value property of the text area. That's very important. That's what makes it a controlled component. Now we're going to spin it up again, and uh, as you can see, um, we can delete notes, and uh, it's working pretty well. So here we're going to create an insertion point in index.js, and the reason we're doing this is because this is an extension. So there's already going to be a HTML page um, for the web page, obviously. Um, and it's unlikely that there's going to be an element called root uh, with the ID root in the page unless it's a React um, app itself. So we're just going to create something called an insertion point and then we're going to just insert it into the document and then render our entire React app into that insertion point. This is the manifest.json. Um, this is the one that comes with React. We're just going to delete it and insert our own. Some pretty standard uh, boilerplate here. So the manifest.json is a really important document um, for Chrome extensions that it essentially tells Chrome what bits are going to be used for what. So here we're specifying a content script. And um, this is a pretty important part. And uh, we're just going to specify here the JavaScript file that it's looking for and the CSS file that it's looking for. So um, main.js and main.css. And we'll see why we're specifying those specific files in uh, just a few minutes. And note that we're specifying a default pop-up as pop-up.html, and we're going to create that file later as well. 
So we're going to add another uh, module here called Rewire. This is going to allow us to build our Chrome extension without code splitting, which is very important to packaging it as a content script. We're going to add a, uh, another file here called buildnonsplit.js and uh, give it its own subdirectory called scripts. I'm just going to add some uh, add a script here. What the script is doing is essentially it's, it's, it's telling React scripts that when you build, um, you don't want code splitting. This is important because when React builds, it uh, splits the code into several different files. Um, it creates chunk files for vendor code. Um, this is good because it optimizes performance. It doesn't have to load the entire JavaScript file um, on page load. Um, but it's bad for us building this extension um, because it programmatically generates uh, hash numbers uh, that prepend the JavaScript files, which the manifest.json has no idea what those hash numbers are, so we just want to get rid of those. Um, and we also want to package it just as one big JavaScript file to, um, to load directly into the page. I'm just going to go into package.json here, and we're going to adjust our build scripts. So we're going to add a build extension script here. Uh, we want it to run this build non-split file, and then we want it to go into the static uh, folder and get all those JS files and put them into one big file called main.js and do the same with the CSS files. I'm just going to go to index.js, and one of the side effects of build non-split is that we have to remove this report web vitals thing um, because it prevents code splitting. It's a new feature of React 17, and uh, we need to take it out. Now we're going to build the extension using the script that we specified, and see what it does. And it worked, and as you can see, there's one main.js file, one main.css file. Let's go to Chrome extensions, and in developer mode, we're going to load unpacked. It's going to specify the build folder of our extension, and there you see it's loaded up no problem and we're going to go test it out on a web page go to google.com shift click add a note and it works there you go we just made a chrome extension so one of the issues with extensions is that if you're going to be adding um, components to a page with a content script, you have to be aware that you're competing with the existing styling on the page. So here we go to example.com. Example.com obviously has styling for divs and all that stuff, so we have to find a way around that. And the way around that is to use a shadow DOM. So to add a shadow DOM, we're going to add the module uh, React Shadow. Um, we're going to create a shadow root.js element here. And if you're unfamiliar with Shadow DOMs, they're pretty nifty. Um, you can read about them. They isolate um, the DOM. They essentially create a DOM within a DOM. So that DOM within a DOM is going to be isolated from styling rules and stuff coming from the, the uh, enclosing DOM. And this is really useful for our application because we want to be in full control of our styles. So here we have, uh, we just created a component and um, we're going to import it into our sticky notes.js. Note that we had to use a style sheet manager for um, the shadow root component because styled components uh, needs that reference in the head. Um, styled components, of course, uses classes to style itself. And um, yeah, so let's, let's uh, try it out and build it. And we're gonna go back to example.com and uh, see how it works. reload the extension and go to example.com and check it out. Our styling is fine. Yay. So right now our app is working great. Uh, styling looks great. Unfortunately, it's not persisting data across browsing sessions, which of course we want it to do um, to be a fully fledged app. So we're going to use the chrome.storage API. This is available for Chrome extensions. And uh, yeah, we're going to use that to persist this data across browsing contexts. 
To do that, we're going to have to create an environment variable called React App Local because Chrome, uh, the Chrome API is not available in local mode. So we just want to make sure that we're not going to break the app when we run it locally. And we're going to create just a file called constants here. And uh, we're just going to create just a really quick variable here to, uh, that we can export um, to tell the rest of our app if we're running it locally or not. Make sure to put the global Chrome uh, at the top of stickynotes.js. This is what allows the Chrome API to be exposed here um, in the body of the, uh, the file here. We're going to grab the URL when the component renders um, with window.location.href. And we're just going to use some use effect functions here to get and also set our notes data to Chrome Store. So we want to get the notes if they exist for the given URL when we load the component. We also want to set the notes um, as soon as they are changed to the Chrome Store. Now we want to create something that's going to pop up when we click the browser action button. Um, this is a pretty standard extension behavior. When you click the extension uh, icon, you want something to pop up and be informative to the user. So we're going to create a little library for our notes. Um, it's going to be a little pop up that just shows every URL that we have notes on and then every note in those URLs. And uh, pretty basic React stuff here. Um, we're using many of the same techniques we used to uh, create these sticky notes components. So you can see we're using styled components here. Making again liberal use of ternary operators and all that jazz, all that fun ES6 syntax. Again, we're making use of the local mode um, variable to just indicate if we're in uh, spun up locally or in extension. Now we're going to create our popup.html page. And remember how we specified this as the default popup in our manifest.json. Note here the two important bits are div with the id popup root and the script with source main.js. And remember, main.js is um, our built React app in its entirety. And uh, yeah, essentially what's, what's happening here is this HTML is just referencing that script. And our app is going to then insert itself into this HTML page. And to do that, we have to add this to index.js. So we're going to import the pop-up component. We're going to get the, the pop-up root here by identifying the element. And we're going to create a little uh, switch here, which is essentially what we're doing. So if the pop-up root is not there, we're going to render the sticky notes component. However, if it is there, we're going to render the pop-up component. And this is how React is going to render one component into one HTML and then a different component into a different HTML page. So now we're going to demo it and we have a note. And then up in here in the browser uh, action pop-up, we have a note there too. So now we have a fully functioning Chrome extension built with React. We've rendered certain components as a content script in the web page. We've rendered certain other components into this pop-up to HTML page right here. And thanks for watching. We hope you found this tutorial informative. And thank you to Facebook Developer Circles for hosting this tutorial. Give us a star on GitHub, and uh, thank you very much.